30 in Reedfield, Maine, if uh, you would join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United, of the United States, States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you and welcome to the uh, second um, select board meeting for the month of October, October 29th. Um, we will proceed with um, uh, business um, and the first item on the agenda is the minutes for October 15th, 2018. I would make a motion to approve the minutes as presented. Okay, it's been moved to um, approve the minutes as presented. Is there a second? Second. Is there any discussion or any changes that need to be made? Seeing none, all in favor? Thank you. We'll go on to uh, 19041, which are the warrants. And John, is that you? That is. Thank you. Do we have the warrant copies? Uh, I thought they were up here. Uh, well, um, I guess we'll, we'll do the later. warrants later. Yep. Yes? Yes. Or I can go downstairs and grab them now. It shouldn't take too long. Why don't you uh, why don't you grab them, but we'll proceed with business in the sure. meantime. We'll go on with uh, select board com communications. And uh, do any members of the select board have anything they would like to say? Go ahead, John. Um, just an FYI to uh, anybody that has a business in town. If you, My wife received a letter from the state tax entity saying that as of November that all taxes would be due at the last day of the month. So I contacted Senator Bellows on it. Nobody in her office knows anything about it so my wife sent her a copy of the letter and she's supposed to be you know checking it out and uh, she's going to get back to us but she said that's that just doesn't sound right, but the, she she had the letter, so it's it's not a misunderstanding. So anybody that got that letter, it's not right. Okay, other board members. Um, yeah, I, this past Sunday, um, uh, actually, in fact, two Sundays ago, uh, I had a chance to go to the landowner appreciation dinner for the uh, Trailbusters. Uh, just a great uh, group of folks getting together to uh, thank uh, the landowners who let them use their land for their outdoor recreation. Um, and uh, it was great. There was a great meal provided. They did a great job of setting everything up. Um, it's great to see that, um, you know, that, that it's appreciated. And I know that um, uh, Sunday mornings at 8 o'clock, uh, the Trailbusters meet down here by the uh, fire department. Um, and uh, they go out to help. Uh, fix up the trails, do some maintenance, look at, um, you know, clearing things that need to be cleared, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and so it's uh, just a chance uh, for folks to help out. Even if you don't have a snowmobile like myself, you can still appreciate folks uh, getting out there and doing it. And I think being outdoors is one of the best parts about Reedfield. So uh, just to say thank you, just to plug uh, and say uh, it's a great part of our town. Thank you. Thank you. Just like to notice that, or mention that the uh, dedication for the new trail down by the Millstream Dam was dedicated on Saturday morning in the cold, and it was really nice. A lot of hard work went into that. And just a special note to Greg Durgan, you can try to throw us under the bus, but it didn't work, Greg. <laughs> <laughs> um, Wednesday night, <clears throat> it's our first trunk and tree. It's at the parking lot in the Union Meeting House, and they'll be able to walk down to the library on the decorated trail. The Union Meeting House is also going to be decorating pumpkins that afternoon because they had to cancel this Saturday. So it'll be uh, a joint thing now where we can come and go trick-or-treating, decorate a jack-o'-lantern. So I hope we see everybody there. And if you want to put a car in the parking lot, let me know. Anybody else? I just do want to remind everybody that November 6th is Election Day, 
Uh, we have federal offices, um, the entire state legislature that's up for election, and the governor's race, and also bond questions, and a general question on the ballot. So I would encourage everyone listening and here to please vote. Um, you, when, you wouldn't know it driving around. No, you wouldn't. State, you wouldn't. You wouldn't know. Like <laughs> the, the flowers of, of, of uh, signs oh. are up, yeah. right? Okay, good. Um, would you like to do the warrants then? I, I would love to do. The okay, warrants. let's proceed with the warrants then. Thank you. Okay, so uh, warrant number eighteen and nineteen for FY nineteen. And by the way, I want to thank Dennis had to sit in for me a couple of weeks ago to sign warrants because uh, I wasn't doing very well. But can you give Dennis one copy of that, please? So thank you, Dennis. That's it. Yes, sir. Thanks. Um, Okay, warrant 19 for the amount of $406,827.76 is the regular warrant. The regular warrant includes RSU 38 payment and the first payment to uh, Cushing Construction for um, contract services, which is uh, Winter Roads uh, services. Those are the uh, two big ones in the warrant. <coughs> any, uh, any questions on that? I have on a different item on there. I'm sorry? I have a question on a different item. Okay. Central Maine Technology? Yes. What did we actually replace? Let me see. I bet it, was it our server? Oh, uh, that's in there. And uh, little ones for the select board? Yes. Awesome. These, these are things that have um, been ordered but not delivered, so um, the check goes first, then the order goes in. <laughs> <laughs> Checks in the mail doesn't That's work. That's how that works. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Everybody has different billing practices. That's so. right. Yeah. And it looks like we've made the first payment for our winter road maintenance to Cushing Construction. Yes. Perfect. Thank you. And on that one, I will just say that, that all the pre-criteria have been met, the equipment inventory, the stockpiling of materials. Uh, and then the general um, ability of the contractor to, to meet the need. So we're ready. Good. Good. May I have a motion, please? Make a motion to accept the warrants as presented for a total of $420,317.32. Second. Uh, just to add, is that a different number than yeah? Just read? to add the uh, the payroll yeah. part of that warrant is um, to a um, one nineteen A is for twenty nine hundred and seventy one dollars and twelve cents. Nineteen B is thirty four hundred fifty four dollars and ninety five cents. Those are state fees that are paid weekly, and then the payroll. Uh, Warrant number 18 is $13,489.56 for the aforementioned total of $420,317.32. And that's what's been moved and seconded. Are there any questions on the motion or is it further discussion? All in favor? Warrants are approved. Those are our only warrants. Is that correct? Yes. yes. Okay. I uh, will move on to staff, uh, town staff reports. Eric? All right, as this is a uh, second meeting of the month, I have no reports at this time. Well. That's well under your five minute limit. Yeah. Well under. <laughs> well, he, he took 10 minutes last meeting. I okay. did, I did. So we made up yeah, for it, thank I you. Think I think we're good. Uh, we'll proceed then with boards, committees, commissions, and departments, and I just want to thank the library board of trustees for their minutes of September 5th. 2018. We'll move on to um, public comment. And so, are there any members of the public that would like to comment on anything in general? Good evening. Um, I'm Jerry Bly. I'm just here wearing the Jerry Bly hat uh, tonight. No, no others. Um, about nine months ago, I stood in this very spot and gave you all a very hard time regarding the proposal to uh, develop the solar project at uh, the fairgrounds. And so I thought it was uh, only appropriate that I come back and commend you 
uh, for restarting that process, which, while I'm not directly involved, I understand is well on the way to uh, siting the solar project uh, at the town's transfer station, which seems to be a very effective solution. So, here, here. Thank you. Um, secondly, uh, I know later you're going to speak to the rezoning petition. I just want to express my general sadness that the citizen initiative process uh, is being thwarted, I'm not sure the correct word, by the machinery of town government. Um, we've seen so much of that in state government over the past eight years where the citizen voices have been um, uh, overruled by, by those and uh, it's, it's sad to see some of that come to here in Reedfield and I would just say that uh, I know there's lots of, uh, of points over the past several years that I think could have treated this whole endeavor in a far more productive way and I'm just sad to see it come to this situation here tonight. I'll leave it at that. Thank you, Jerry. Are there any other general comments by residents? Yes. yes. Bob, are you going to speak to the item on the agenda later or just kind of in general? I think I'll just speak now. Okay, thanks. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, I understand that the planning board has already sent their consideration that the petition does not fulfill or agree with the refill comprehensive plan. This is essentially the first step in the negation of that. Uh, petition and its declaration that it's illegal or not going to be passed by your committee. A petition, we already found out, was valid. Number of signatures and the actual statement, that already was agreed upon. The question really was whether it was in violation of law. If we look at the petition and the rules of government and the rules of the state, uh, the, state, uh, the state government, it says clearly that it has to be, in order for it to be declared invalid, it has to be in violation of federal law or state law. A petition allows the people to vote for a law. They can declare a law and they can vote for it. The Reed Field Comprehensive Law is a Reed Field Ordinance. It's a Reed Field event. It's something that the people of Reed Field can vote for, they can negate, they can create an entirely new Reed Field Comprehensive Code through petition. Bob, I, I want to respectfully make sure you're able to make your points and everything, but I do want to not have... I know there's a, a time a, limit. There is a... Yes. Um, yes. I understand. Yep. You're declaring this law tonight invalid because it violates the Reed Field Comprehensive Code, but we know that Reed Field law can alter it, we can change it, it can be renewed through the petition, but you have chosen to negate it because your lawyer tells you it's possible through some dishonesty to declare this a state law. It isn't. And that is a repudiation of the vote of the people of this town. It's a repudiation of the local government. It's a repudiation of your job. It's a repudiation of the of the monument outside when you walked in for those people who died for the freedom of this country. Petition is a First Amendment freedom. It's one of the few constitutional elements of the state universe, of the state universe. I'm too much in the university. It's, too, it's one of the cardinal elements of the Constitution of the state of Maine. 
and you're going to invalidate it, you will betray the state government, the state law, and Redfield law. That's, that is an embarrassment. It's an embarrassment of your office. It's an embarrassment of everything. And I am personally upset because this violation of law you'll use because you're using it to evict me, to try and eliminate me from this state, from this town, from any part of this town. Bob, could you wrap it up now, please? I am. Thank you. Leah will be presenting a, put, a petition, uh, or at least a statement later. And in it, we'll look at a way in which we can, we can look at the possibilities that this government, this ta local town government, can act in a democratic way. And that would mean redressing some of the things that are being done tonight. And I'm assuming that it will be what I think it is, if it isn't, I'll be very happy. What I would appreciate is if, and I have here the law, the law as it applies to Redfield, and to your petition, that you review it. If you find, if you find that this law is not what you thought it to be, or your actions to be, then you can postpone this decision for one that actually speaks to a democratic resolution and not something that betrays the people. So if you'd like a copy of it, I have it here. Would you like a copy? Sure. Okay. We normally don't take um, items at the, okay. at the table. You can give that to the okay. town manager. Yeah, just. Give it to the town manager and he'll. He'll yeah. pass it around. Thank you. Is there anyone else who would like to speak um, in general to the select board? Seeing none, and we're finished with citizen comments. And are we all set? Oh, well, maybe not. Maybe. Bob wasn't either. Mm -hmm. Bob isn't either. I know. Okay. Um, we can move on. We'll move on. Yeah, that's Bruce. Well, uh, Bruce, I have a, I have a, uh, a, a, a nonprofit organization that I've created, and I just want to present it. Should I do that now, or later? Um, is it pertaining to the business um, at hand, or in general? Okay, and you're not a resident of Reedfield? No. Um, I'm willing to entertain listening to it is the rest of the board. A limited amount of time. Yeah, the just three minutes. You can make it a... It'll be less than three minutes. Thank you. Thank you. Why don't you go ahead? Okay, thanks. Uh, hi, I'm Leah Hayes. I've started a nonprofit organization called Restore Reedfield. And right now at this moment, we have three goals. The first is to support non-bipartisan candidates whose goal it is to restore Reedfield political integrity. Um, the second goal is to expose secret meetings that exist to control or deny the public will. I'm and I, I, didn't I didn't hear that. Hear. Oh, I'm sorry, the second, did you hear the first goal? No, I didn't. But go ahead. Okay, I'll repeat it. So the first goal is to support non-bipartisan candidates whose goal it is to restore Reedfield's political integrity. The second goal is to expose secret meetings that exist to control or deny the public will. And the third goal is to support term limitations so that they may reasonably provide opportunity for all people to participate in their democracy. So and you would have it shorter than three years? Three years, is that what you said? That's what, that's what we run for now, it's three years. That would be a topic to discuss with the committee, yeah. Thank you. Um, and I have 
flyers with information and contact numbers if anybody's interested. Thanks. Okay, thank you. Uh, we'll move on to, um, thank you. Um, we'll move on to um, old business, which is to consider recommendations to take any appropriate action on the petition for rezoning in the Millstream area. Do I have a motion? From the floor, I mean from the floor. I can make a motion. I just have to get to the right spot. There's so many pages. Sure. I'm just, I can't find the right spot to start. Should be about halfway through, probably. I make a motion that we deny the petition <coughs> to go on the ballot for rezoning the Millstream area due to the fact that we've been counseled by legal counsel that it would be illegal. I'll second. Okay, we have a motion on the floor. Is there any discussion among the board members? Yes, first I'd like to ask for um, people to just listen because we listen in turn um, in both directions. Um, and this is select board discussion time. Uh, the process as I understand it with the planning board, there has been an appeal filed um, and the Board of Appeals process is to see if the planning board acted correctly in all of the steps that it took in evaluating the case at hand. Um, I suppose pending what that appeal finds, uh, we may change what we decide tonight, but um, according to the planning board in looking at all of the current laws for this town of Reedfield, um, including the comprehensive plan, it, the petition does, there were two things I think that went before this, the planning board. There was the petition and there was also a, a rezoning request. Um, and that does not come up to snuff with what um, is laid out in town law. And then we have advice from the lawyer that says, and I think he cited six different cases in state law where uh, we are advised that this would not be a wise move to make since it has been put down at least six times in the courts. Um, I think we owe it to the citizens of the town to take the advice of legal counsel um, when we asked for it to be given and not set us up for a court case where we would most likely lose based on precedent. That's why I'm supporting this action. Other members of the board? I guess I'll make a very general statement. I'm very disappointed uh, in the fact that this is in front of us in a, in a way that we will, um, and I'm going to vote um, for the motion. Um, denying a citizen petition is probably the most difficult vote I can cast. And I can only cast it because of the amount of advice that we have, both from the planning board and um, the, in our legal counsel. And um, I really regret doing that. It is not the first time that this board, and I don't mean this board, but the select board itself, because it wasn't constituted of the same members, um, have denied a petition. Um, it is something uh, rarely done, um, and it is only because uh, of a conflict um, with law that uh, we are going to perhaps proceed with this, or at least consider this vote and then, and then move on. That's just generally what I wanted to say. Is, does anyone else want to speak to the motion? I guess I would like to just reply to that. Um, John and I were the authors of a previously denied petition that came before a select board. And I believe that Bruce and Chris were sitting on the board at the time. Mm -hmm. uh, it was very disappointing to be sitting in the audience and have a vote come out that went against your petition. Uh, we were told that it was because it was illegal to do it that way. Um, it violated state law because what we were asking for would need a charter to be in place and our town doesn't have a charter. Um, at that time, my real problem with the decision was that it was never discussed with us. We turned the petition in, there was no public 
airing of it. There was no discussion. A motion was made. The vote was taken, and it was all done. Um, and I, I understand sitting on the side and hearing that something isn't going through. Um, John and I researched it and found out that the select board was correct. It, it did violate um, what they said it would. Um, so we went about it in a different way. Um, and I think we've all come to a, an agreement that we're doing a pretty good thing here with the, uh, the outcome of that, which was all about the budget process. Um, I think what's different this time is that there's been a lot of conversation. There's been a lot of opportunity for conversation to take place. There have been public hearings. Um, the fact that something's being asked for that we believe um, is illegal is what we have to deal with. Um, and I am not acting in any sort of a partisan way. Thank you. Any other members of the board? I, mean, I, feel, I feel pretty much, you know, what, uh, what Catherine just said. It is disappointed to have, to have a petition turned out. There's a lot of work that goes into it. Um, but, you know, it, it is what it is, bottom line. Uh, we have to follow legal advice. If we don't, then we shouldn't get legal advice and pay for it. Um, so I, uh, I hope I don't really agree. Then let's move to the vote. All in favor? Anyone opposed? No. Petition is rejected. We'll proceed now with a can second. A yes, please. Okay. Uh, just very quickly Absolutely. for clarification. But can you only. go to the mic so we can all I hear? Definitely go to the mic. Thank you, Bob. I researched that wall myself and the petition, and I found absolutely declarative information that the select board could rezone one lot if it wanted to, and so could the people in any town in Maine. Bob, what is your question? The please? question is, he said there are several laws that this would violate. I'd like to know what they are. I'd like to see, I'd, I'd like you to tell me and tell the audience what laws have been violated by this. Bob, what I'm not going to do is go through the packet, which uh, is a public document. You can look at it online and you can read uh, the attorney's um, findings. So it is available and it, it's available there. That attorney also said. Okay, now we're, my, now, my, now we're getting into a back and forth, which I oh really, no, no. really the, don't want to do. This attorney <laughs> has also said that my small events that were being held there were in violation, and I have his document that said that, in violation of mass gatherings, 100 people, 500 people, and that I should be, uh, I should be censured for that. So he's obviously said some things that were incorrect before. Bob. I'd like to know what it was and I'd like this committee to also look at it a little more carefully in terms of maybe other legal information before you, before you betray the will of the people of this town. Thank you. We'll now proceed with the rest of the agenda. And we're going to go to 19037, which is to conduct a second reading of the new and revised cemetery policies and regulations. Um, I apologize, I was not at the uh, last meeting. Um, so, who is presenting um, that second reading? Uh, we, I um, read it. Uh, I did speak with the cemetery committee, yeah. Andy. Andy, please speak. Andy. Andy, before you get started, I just sure. have a, I don't know if this will help, but have has the committee made any changes since we read this at our last meeting? We may, we corrected two typos that were brought to our attention. Okay, okay. thank you. <laughs> that helps. But, you know, this is, you know, the substance is identical. So, so the substance is identical. Okay. <clears throat> and the, some of the confusion I think at the last meeting is that there's also a really beautiful packet that's been prepared by the town office that has some material that isn't in here. But you know what we're asking for you to consider is this 
whatever it is, page document. And it's broken down into kind of an overview of what the cemeteries are about, how we're organized, that you folks are in charge, we offer you advice, the sexton carries out the work with the help of a lot of other folks. We talk at some length about perpetual care and grounds maintenance and encouraging and managing volunteers. And then we have kind of two, a set of regulations and a set of rules. The regulations have to do with selling lots and putting people in them. And the rules have to do with the conduct of folks who are visiting the cemeteries and who are ma helping us maintain the graves. And in both cases, we spent a lot of time and went around and around both looking at other people's rules and our old rules and kind of the experience in the cemeteries and tried to be as reasonable as we could, allowing people to you know, celebrate their the folks who had passed on, but also keeping the cemeteries in a way that we could maintain them effectively. So there, you know, there's nothing magic about these. The, the magic piece is that we did pass the ordinance and now you folks can approve the rules. So we don't have to try to run the minutiae of the rules past the entire electorate anymore. But if they have opinions, we can always revise them too. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, I have two questions, maybe they're more requests. Um, and I just had them in front of me. Um, under number three, perpetual care, it says include a link for the ordinance here. I assume that that's if it's on the website, we would have the link, or are you going to put the link in? In the, the hard document? No, those are hard to click on. I know. <laughs> but yes, the, the intent was that this would be posted on the website and it would be a good place to cross link to the controlling ordinance. Okay. And then uh, down towards the bottom is number five under cemetery regulations. Oh, come on. It says effective oh, question yeah. mark 2018. Would that be, if we approve it, we'll be putting today's date in with that? Is that yeah. what the intention is there? That was the intent, that whenever okay. you guys were happy with it, you, you could put a date on it, and then we'd, we'd know when to start thinking about it. Great. I would make a motion to approve the cemetery, I'll get the right name here, the cemetery policies as presented. Second that. Um, my question to the board is, we should we put that effective date in, oh, in, sorry. in, in there? Mm. May I amend my motion? Okay, John. Please. I would make a motion to approve the cemetery policies as presented effective today. 10, 29, 18. 18. And I'll approve that amendment. <clears throat> I'm not going to take it as an amend, amended uh, We'll make it motion. a remade motion. just going to take it as a remade motion. Because we didn't second I, I think the it's other one. pretty simple. Um, I mean, we didn't vote on it. My additional question on the rules is, does that include all the pricing? Sorry? Does that include the pricing of lots and so forth? It does, yeah. And now you, you yeah. clearly are, you are the decision makers on that. If you want to charge more, that's... Okay, so the pricing. But this is this is this is not a change in price. No, because no. I would think we would want to give notice to people in regards to. But that. we don't have the we don't have it in. Okay. Well, and as a policy, the it can be changed at any point in sure. time without right. us approving anything. No, we do have we do have a four hundred. The current current price is four hundred dollars a lot. Right now, that's a. It's been that for a long, right. and, long time. And. I think at, at your at your choice, you know, it, it could go up because you know, mm -hmm. it does cost money to provide perpetual. So my question in general was, that's a separate action. Okay, so I, I just needed to understand. That. Maybe the uh, cemetery committee could <coughs> talk it over and come up with a recommendation if they have one on. Any, any yeah, they should advise us of any pricing changes. Okay. Obviously, I think we've been in this pricing mode for 
dozens of years, maybe even. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So let's. Yeah. Uh, we we have a motion on the floor, and I'm kind of getting us off topic. Yeah. So now we'll deal with the motion. Like Is there any other thank, discussion? I'd like to thank the cemetery committee. Yes. I know how much work you folks put in, not not just with policy and with you know the paperwork and all that stuff, but physically, uh, there's a lot of work that goes into our cemeteries. A lot in, in fixing stones and cleaning cemeteries. They do a yeoman's job, and, and they, they're irreplaceable, really. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. I'll rel relay that to those who aren't here. Um, we'll go ahead and take the vote. All in favor? <coughs> Second reading is complete. Awesome. Andy, I'll get in touch with you about the next uh, scheduled. Um, the select board needs to look at some other fee schedules as well. Okay. So we can we'll try, to, can roll them all try to coordinate. Yep. So I guess I better buy my cemetery plot now. <laughs> yeah. We're going to see a run on it. Get them quick before they go yeah, up. Yeah, I'll be in the morgue. <laughs> uh, the second reading puts the uh, policy into, uh, no into effect. effect as of 1029. Uh, so we'll now move on to new business. And we have in front of us tonight uh, the first draft budget and warrant schedule. And um, I guess what I would probably say, first of all, I'll let Eric speak to it but uh, momentarily, but I would say there may be some adjustments and dates uh, early on as we look forward to. I, I don't know if you successfully navigated all the holidays or if I'll catch uh. you out again or something. <laughs> On that, but I could I put a bigger wager on it this year than last that I did uh -huh. uh, that I did catch all those, but uh, still I'm sure that we will have some adjustments to make as we go through this. So um, you're really looking for a consensus advisory from the board tonight to proceed with this schedule. Um, we probably don't need a motion, but um, general uh, consensus and any right. questions on it that may that may be there. Yeah, um, and I'll just say that I went through. Uh, I did uh, get a copy of the school calendar. I tried to uh, avoid any and all uh, school holidays, religious holidays, um, federal state holidays. Uh, and I think that we have a, a really good basis um, shaped much like last year's process, but um, I did uh, work in some more time in between a few of the key uh, decision points and public meetings uh, so that uh, if in the event, which we almost always do, we have changes as a result of public input and public feedback, we're then more able to, to um, uh, accurately put those into the budget uh, and the presentation materials for the subsequent public meetings. Um, so I did try to space out the last month or so of this process a little bit better um, and uh, still maintain the um, uh, time frames necessary to meet uh, the statutory uh, uh, deadlines, the 100 days and 60 days and 10 days, uh, all of those ones that are in bold uh, for, um, uh, for the process that we have. Uh, I do need to, to make um, uh, an effort to um, uh, discuss this with, with Rob and our town clerk to make sure there are no uh, issues on her end, um, but um, I, I think that uh, given how closely this hues to last year's schedule uh, and the, um, the changing um, being of uh, our meetings, not necessarily the substantive uh, time timeline, uh, that uh, I think we're in a little bit better position than we were last year, uh, but uh, still very much um, uh, looking at a, a fairly lengthy, thorough budget process. Thank you, Eric. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, but the uh, difference between the 328 meeting and the 516 meeting, which are highlighted on this, um, at least on the copy that I have. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, the first one is actually a hearing on the budget proposed where we may be making changes to the budget at that point um, based on public feedback from that hearing. Absolutely, that would be the, 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 the one of the most um, yes. prominent opportunities. It's not actually a hearing, it's a meeting. <laughs> Public budget meeting, yes, you're right. Whereas the second one should not be listed as a meeting. It's you're really right. just it should a be hearing. Listed. That's, yeah. that's hearing. exactly my point. Uh, the second one is the budget warrants have been set, and we'll hear people saying, yay, this should pass, or nay, it should not pass. Um, that's on May 16th. Sure. That would be on the May yeah. 16th. Right. So I, I just, uh, there's always been confusion around those two meetings. 
And I just want to make sure that as we proceed in the budget process that anything we can do to help the public understand that um, the difference between the two meetings is just important to do. Yeah, well, I think that that's a good uh, point about the, um, the word meeting. I'll drop that from the second um, and try to distinguish perhaps that way by referencing the first one as a meeting and the second one, um, I guess, as a hearing. Although I think that your, your explanation up front um, is probably the best one we can give, that uh, the first one really is for um, an open opportunity to discuss, recommend, uh, and deliberate, whereas the uh, second meeting uh, very much is just to explain and educate uh, the and results. So for somebody to come to the second meeting and want to tell us about a change, it's way too late. Yeah, they no, have to come um, in absolutely. March. Yeah. Yep. So or I'm February or January. Yeah. Yeah. So I guess after it says public budget meeting on the 328 line, I'd like it, I'm making a suggestion. Mm -hmm. um, public budget meeting for hearing for public input public to input. express public input. Okay. Yep. I'll wordsmith a little bit. Yeah. Yep. And, and then the second one is public budget hearing to explain the warrant. That's really what it is. Hearing. The second one is informational. Yeah, hearing. informational. Is that what okay. Yeah. Well, right. it is informational, but at the same time, residents can get up and say, this should pass or this shouldn't pass, and here's why I think it should pass or, or shouldn't pass. So it is um, a floor yes. meeting. So mm -hmm. we want to make sure that we do that. So it holds we'll, no we'll weight, words, but yeah, people we'll can express. A little yeah. bit. Um, so is there general consensus among the board members that this is a fairly good process mm -hmm. and that the town manager, mm -hmm. with as further input comes, this is basically our working framework? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I have one question. Sure. I think in the past we've been doing the capital investment plan review earlier, like November, December, and now it's kind of after you've heard all of the things. Is there a reason for that? Uh, well, I think that, that was when we had our actual um, public hearing on it. Last year we had two um, meetings on this. We did, um, as we were trying to pull the process together, uh, have a, a precursor um, to really get our, get our act together as far as how we looked at, discussed, and um, um, planned to execute that capital investment. Um, so I think that, um, I think what you're recalling was those two meetings from the prior year where the first one was more of an organizational meeting and discussion about the really nuts and bolts of this, and the second um, was more of, a, of an explanation um, uh, to the public. We could take a look at that again, do a similar process where we have something more of a workshop uh, and then have uh, the, um, uh, the more public meeting where we discuss and present this stuff in a more polished way. Um, I guess I, I see that as being something that we had uh, done a fairly good job with last year, so I did take that other one out, but... Um, I'm okay with that. I just wanted to yeah. hear it's the, the it's, justification. It's the difference between the nuts and bolts versus the presentation and discussion, so... Okay. Um, we could do it either way. Uh, I think that there's value in having it, although I'm looking at this and saying there's a lot of meetings here. Um, but I'm okay with it the way it is. I just wanted to know okay. why it was going that way. Okay, so yeah, I guess we're, good we're, we're set with this. Andy, since you're here, yeah. do you see anything that jumps out at you that you would want to go to the microphone and quickly address? And why would we be asking Andy? Because he's the chair of the budget committee. Just for the public. Yeah. You want to borrow mine? Yeah, I, no, that's the, the only, I did read it at, at home about time. <clears throat> yeah, the, on a personal level, the only one piece that um, I will have to, to work around to make work are the Tuesday meetings, because I usually go to chorus that night, but I don't have to sing <laughs> if I'm going to dance. Mm -hmm. well, and those are just placeholders. I'll make yeah. that very clear that the Thursdays and the Tuesday meetings for the budget committee were based on last year's Schedule and that we're depending best. on who we end up with on the committee. We want to minimize the conflicts for them. I exactly. Agree. So those are placeholders. But in terms of the kind of the, the big building blocks, this looks reasonable to me. You know, as long as we all now know where we're going on the capital investment plan, which I think we pretty much do. So I would suggest that, um, of course, we have um, a couple of things that do occur in November, but by December we have more hard-coded uh, yeah. dates. 
So I think we're all set this, with that item. This is going to be on the website, and will, will paper <coughs> copies be available for the public? Eric? Yeah, this will be. Um, this is what one of our main uh, avenues for advertising. Um, uh, the, the overall schedule of the process, uh, opportunities for input. Um, and I'll say, you know, these are all public meetings. Every single one of these meetings, unless it's a, a, a deadline or some other uh, criteria, uh, is a public meeting where people can come and present and discuss um, uh, the budget overall uh, and have an impact on the budget over the majority of these meetings, I think. So there's real opportunities here. Uh, and this is what we put out at the post offices on our town website here. Uh, we'll make sure these are all um, very well notified. Um, and uh, we didn't last year have um, our up website fully up and running. Uh, so this year we will, we will be able to put out notices uh, to the email listserv, uh, the email database we have for residents. So if anybody would like to get this uh, sent out you know, when we send the notice for the meeting, every every week or so before these meetings, uh, please go and sign up on our uh, our website for the email notifications, uh, and just click on the budget information, uh, and we will be putting this out on a regular basis, and folks will get notified uh, as these things are happening. So, and people really need to get involved in this budget process. I mean, the dates are all here. Come to the meetings, get educated. I know sometimes it's intimidating, but you know, I, I thought that before I got involved. And I've served on budget committees and now on the select board. And what's, what's disappointing is when after the vote in late June, people, I'll see people and they'll say, well, you know, I, I really didn't like this or I didn't like that. But did you show up at any of the hearings or the meetings? Well, no. Okay, we, if we don't know, we can't, we can't consider anything. I mean, that's not to say that if, you know, Joe Public comes up and says, we don't want this, that we're going to vote against it. I mean, it, you know, obviously there's a lot of reasons behind budget, um, budget items, but please get involved. I guess I have one question. Um, on 5-2, it says the final budget review and approval for the budget committee, but hasn't the select board already made the budget finalized on the 22nd of April? Let me look at that, 422. Wouldn't they want to be the uh, switched? Yeah. Yeah, uh, I'll look at that. Um, I think we did have some um, issues with that last year as well, with the, the scheduling and who, who got the last word. Um, I remember right, the budget committee had to meet after us. Okay. They did because you guys made a change, that's yeah. what okay. it was. So that, that's why this is put in that way. Okay. <laughs> yeah. You're right. Andy's bad. So, You're right. So th so I know we go back and forth. So Andy we will, does. when they see the budget on May 2nd, the warrant will already be fixed. But if we had changed something, they that's can right. choose yeah. to vote. Because Th they will need to re-vote yeah. to Exactly. accept any changes either yay or their advisory to you but their vote is still required so if you change okay. something you have the ability that they can't change the budget um, they can just vote to accept it or, or, or recommend it or not so that's why that thank you Andy and thank you for helping remember why that was okay, okay. Thank, you. thank you thank you um, yeah, that's right. we'll right. move on to uh, 19043 which is the uh, schedule of coming meetings holidays and town office closures um, this is not really meetings, it's um, closures Closures and just, just schedule going forward. Is this um, just for info? Is that this is yeah. for information only, really. It, well, it is. Um, in the past, um, the, the board has had more of an active role in reviewing and considering um, what days uh, the, um, the town office may um, uh, close early for a, a holiday or um, the, the one example here, I mean, typically um, we take a half day before um, New Year's or before Christmas uh, and that is something that, that is not guaranteed in the collective bargaining agreement uh, but is something that um, uh, has been done traditionally where the, the, the town office closes half a day early, to folks take vacation time uh, or floating holidays and they use that. Um, so this this is to be a bit more formal than we've been in the past about some of those events um, so that the board is fully aware and the public is fully aware of, wh of what happens there. Um, and there are some uh, unique situations this year. Um, in December, uh, Christmas falls on a Tuesday. 
uh, which means that um, uh, it would be a bit, um, I won't say uncomfortable, but um, people probably won't want to come in on Monday, um, the day before. Um, Especially so for a half a day. For a half a day. So uh, the thought was that rather than schedule a half a day as we normally do, we would just close for the day uh, and offer, um, offer that um, uh, extension or uh, as a closure um, for, for the employees. Um, and that's not a paid day off unless they use vacation time. Yeah, yeah, they, they would have the option of using vacation time. It would not be a paid holiday, uh, I'll put it that way. But they um, would know in well in advance that they would need that. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So this is the, the idea here is to give the employees a bit of advance notice to get, let the select board and the public know um, and to just make sure that we're all on the same page when it comes to scheduling some of these unique things that happen uh, and making sure that, that you, know, you are okay with us closing the office for a day on a Monday. Uh, when Christmas is on Tuesday. Has there been employee input on this? Uh, I've spoken with um, a few members of the of the of the staff, um, and they they Huge actually pretty much all the staff, right? Well, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I've spoken with the office staff. Um, this doesn't necessarily affect, like for example, the Monday closure uh, wouldn't affect the transfer station staff. Right. Um, so I have talked with the office staff, and they they are usually the ones that suggest these um, uh, these um, early closures or half days. Um, and I think it's a, it's a reasonable thing to accommodate that when we can, uh, because we're having fairly low activity levels, and it, it is a, a nice benefit. So, do you want an approval from the select board tonight to to um, approve this schedule? Yeah, I'd appreciate that. Um, that'd Before be we do that, I have a couple of comments. Please do. Okay. I think I'm pretty good at reading these kinds of things, and it took me a couple times through to figure this out. I would like a different symbol used for the. Saturday after Thanksgiving because it looked to me like the transfer station was going to be closed half a day on Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, opening again on Tuesday until I finally figured out that, okay, wait a minute, they're going to be open on the Saturday even though the town office is closed on the Friday. Yeah. So I don't know. I think I know why we do that. Um, yeah, it was one of the quirks of the collective bargaining. Um, right. That's, right. But you know, if we can um, just make it clear. And so then I realized that, okay, we're looking for these bold outlined days for something. Oh, right. Then the top one I couldn't really see. And I didn't know if that was just my scanned copy, but federal and state holidays. And we didn't yeah. list all of them. We are only looking at Thanksgiving, Christmas on both years. Or are the others actually marked somewhere? Um, we should have all. Uh, 12 holidays identified here. Let's see. Um, Let two, three, copy. four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. Yep. So. They're shaded. Okay. They might the not shading be coming through. The shading did yeah. not come through. Oh, I see. Okay. So I'm just looking at that yeah, going, so, so well, that's, that's it, really interesting. That's what it should look like in print copy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. So if we're going to put, if this were to be posted, Online, we would not be able to shade. You'd have to put something else in there because it didn't color pick up. or something. Okay, sure. It yep. won't come through. Okay, yep. so yes, I'm happy now. Thank okay. you. <laughs> no wonder I was. Let's, confused. let's take a motion to um, approve um, or adjust this as you see fit. Um, I would make a motion to approve the upcoming holiday and closure calendar effective. November 1st, 2018 through December 31st, 2019. Second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. Any discussion on the motion? Um, my only input would be obviously there could be a change down the road, and that oh, would require absolutely. because yeah. we moved and seconded it, it would require a motion to do so. Um, so just an FYI. All in favor of the motion? Thank you. Um, could I have a motion to adjourn? So, so to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Nobody moved until that. <laughs>